drug war. He said, and as you did here, and we quote, tulungan ninyo kami na pagandahin ang imahe ng Pilipinas. Let's get the reaction of academic and columnist Mr. Richard Hidarian, sir. Magandang gabi and welcome back to the Chiefs. Salamat, Ed. Uh, it's a pleasure to join the guest. Uh, Salamat also, Amy and Lucy. Good to see you. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Uh, well, uh, you did hear uh, the Senate President speak a while ago, but uh, in fairness to him, it's not the first time that we've heard this kind of uh, a plea to the media. Uh, but uh, how do you view this, uh, especially in, in, uh, in the context of uh, what some would call the rehabilitation of, uh, no, of, uh, uh, of uh, the Marcos name? Uh, so some people put that together and say, nah, uh, so this is just exactly what, uh, what we're worried about. Well, I mean, sa isang banda, of course, agree ako na hindi naman trabaho ng media na nega lang ng nega. The same way na hindi trabaho ng mga academics, hindi trabaho ng mga pundits, columnists na mag-point out lang yung mga negatibo or mga pagkakulang ng isang administration. I completely agree with that. Critical thinking is not about being critical all the critical. time. Critical mm -hmm. thinking is about giving credit where credit is due and also calling out kung may mga abuse of power. So, yes, sa isang banda naman, in fairness, we see the top officials of the government, including the Secretary of Justice and Secretary of the ILG, Secretary Abalos, being on top of Kapersi's case, no? Uh, to, to make sure naman we get to the bottom of this. And, of course, it looks like a whole network criminals may have been involved behind this and it's not like the media is not reporting that it's yeah. not like well i'm press conference about this right no one is denying that ang akin lang naman more important doon sa imahe ng Pilipinas ay, ay yung katotohanan ng sa Pilipinas at hindi naman po mga mangmang yung mga foreigners diba you know when the united nations makes a report or when foreign journalists make a report it's not like tumitingin lang sila sa mga sinasabi ng bloggers or kung sinong nega-nega na journalist yan. No, they know the facts on the ground. The reports is very clear. The Philippines is among the 10 most dangerous places for the journalists. We have had more than 250 cases of journalists get, getting killed. More than 80% of the cases, walang, walang hostisya na nangyari, di ba? So we're hoping for the best na the Mar Marcos administration will deal with the situation. Will, uh, and in fairness to President Marcos, in fairness to the Department of Justice, the spokesman of the Department of Justice, they consistently try to emphasize their commitment to make the country more safe. But let's not forget, ang, ang issue dito hindi yung imahe lang. Ang issue dito yung katotohanan, yung safety ng mga journalists. And para sa akin, well, if you want to improve the image of the country, well, do your job. Be an efficient exactly. official. Be a good senator. Mm -hmm. Make make sure na may checks and balances. No, so asana hindi tayo concerned lang sa imahe, concerned din tayo sa performance and competence. Because if we have competent government, competent officials, guess what? The Philippines will be respected around the world. Guess what? If we have rule of law, investors will come here. Hindi mang mang yung mga foreigners, hindi mang mang yung, yung United Nations. So I think it's an insult to the international community. It's an insult to the journalists to put the onus on the reporters, when in fact the reporters are doing their job, no? Uh, the onus is on the government to do its part of the bargain. Akin naman, again, I agree also na dapat we give credit where credit is due. On that point, I completely have no disagreement with the Senate President Zubir. Hmm. Pero sir, is there a misreading or a misappreciation of the role or the job of journalists? Kasi uh, as we heard kanina, pati mga thousands of negative comments, eh parang nakapatong yung responsibilidad sa media. Yeah, we see this demonization of the Philippine media, the so-called mainstream media, uh, demonization of the civil society, human rights activists. This is so Rodrigo Duterte time, right? So unfortunately, mukhang iba yung president ngayon, but yung mga ganitong negativo ay nag-carry over. So if President Marcos wants to rebrand the Philippines, as he mentioned, if President Marcos wants to take the country in a different direction, a better direction, and in fairness, I would say President Marcos Jr. has been recalibrating the drug war of the president to make it more humane. Mm -hmm. In fairness to President, Duterte, uh, president Marcos, he has been more, let's say, calibrated in our foreign policy, in detail subservience to China, at least rhetorically, we, are, we have better relations. But you know, so I think in rebranding, part of that rebranding is to stop victim blaming and stop gaslighting, right? Uh, victim blaming when someone is victimized by a crime, right? And gaslighting when other people are reporting that a crime happened. So this gaslighting victim blaming phenomenon is not so something new. It has been carried over from the past, especially from the past administration. So I hope President Marcos internally at least will tell his, to his friends and allies Baka naman, kaysa mag-aaway tayo sa mga uh, kasama natin dyan sa, jour sa journalistic world, let's explain to them why they should be more hopeful about the direction of the country as far as rule of law is the concern. But the facts, Ed, uh, no, is very clear. More than, the Philippines is among the 10 most dangerous places for journalists. 
and we need to still see improvement. So getting to, down to the bottom of the case with Cap Percy and other journalists who have been slayed around uh, uh, over the years is definitely a step in the right direction. And fighting with the media is not the best way to reassure. And lastly, let me also tell you, uh, again, uh, to say na yung nangyari sa Pilipinas ay medyo normal dahil may violence sa U.S., dahil may violence, uh, I don't know, Somalia, Iraq, whatever. That's not the point, eh. The point is how to make the Philippines safer. The point is not to point out problems in other countries, to make it look as if it's not too bad in the Philippines. Again, uh, number seven tayo in terms of, you know, least safe countries on Earth. So you can name me 150 other countries. They're still going to be better than the Philippines, all right? So let's not forget the rankings here, right? Bottom 10 in the world. Kasabay natin, no? My goodness, Somalia, Afghanistan, Iraq, these are countries in the middle of war or conflicts. Syria, and then you have Mexico, Brazil, and India, besieged, problematic, polarized democracies. That's not a very fancy club to be part of. No? So, sana we get, medyo umangat naman tayo konti. Again, I'm not saying let's be Sweden tomorrow. I'm not expecting President Marcos to make us Norway or New Zealand tomorrow. But sana naman we're not bottom 10. Right. Yun lang naman sinasabi natin dito. So, it's the it's trabaho ng gobyerno. Kaya nga, in-elect natin sila. They're public servants. They have to serve us by reassuring us. And tayo na sa media, mamamayan din tayo. Bumoto tayo, no? I mean, we're citizens, right? So, we, we deserve to be protected by the government and to be reassured by the government, not to be victim-blamed, not to be gaslighted. This is not the way forward. What do you even make of the Senate president asking the media to... Be kind to government. I mean, what do you even make mm -hmm. of that? that I, I, I mean, I, I would like to think that uh, the Senate President and all of these government officials, especially mm -hmm. elective government officials, already know the role of media in government and, you know, in society. And to actually ask media to, hey, you know, be nice. Yeah. Um, I don't even know how to read. I mean, from the think we were going to fly. I think that that's my point, yeah. though. But uh, really? Look, uh, he, you think didn't the Senate going president. To yeah. Throw the light didn't the Senate a, president like mention China, right? I think the Senate president. I'm not sure if this can qualify as another diplomatic faux pas, but, but the Senate president mentioned China. So, if you're in China, kayo, the moment that you do your job, ma I, I, Yes. <laughs> so what are you trying to say? Exactly. <laughs> China? Like, I, I'm not sure about what was going on there. You know? so parang, I, I'm not sure comparing ourselves to North exactly. Korea or yes. China will make the situation good here. No. I mean, mm -hmm. unfortunately, China is very hard to speak of any real journalism. So, kaya siguro ang baba ng fatalities because there are no real journalists to talk about. They only have state journalists. <laughs> kaya nga, mga Chinese journalists, pag nasa Twitter sila, one, the moment they tweet my label doon, no, this is a state-affiliated journalist. Only. Because they're not real journalists in the sense of the word. No, They're not yes. independent. They're not outside mm -hmm. the grip of the government. Eh, eh, mga, anto, eh, literally, binabayaran sila ng gobyerno. No? So I don't know why he was pointing out at China, although I found that refreshingly honest. Not to hear other officials <laughs> okay. pointing out how horrible the press freedom situation in China is, considering how much President Duterte loved China and all the good things Marcos is saying about China. Now, the other thing is, let's be, I, mean, I think there's also this element that, I mean, in Latin, yung, yung hawak ng mainstream media on the information landscape has definitely weakened over the past 10, day, uh, 10 years or so, no? Especially with the rise of bloggers and influencers mm -hmm. and all. So I don't know if some officials, I'm not saying Senator Zubiri per se, but maybe there's some officials who think that maybe that should be the direction. We should be more like bloggers than real journalists, right? Uh, and, and the bloggers have definitely shown vulnerability of us in mainstream media, no? Yung kakulangan natin. But that doesn't mean that, you know, we have to compromise our duties and adjust to the new trend, which is influencer blogger way of doing this, it, it actually emphasizes the need for us to double down on our job and holding those in power to account, you know, speaking truth to power. And lastly, naman, for me, I'm sure there's some journalists who are mahilig lang magnega. I'm sure there are some. I, 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 I'm not going to name drop or name names. May mga tao dyan, talagang gusto lang nila sira ng itong administration na to for political, personal, whatever reasons, psychological reasons, whatever, then maybe the senator can point out those persons in particular and say, unfair yung coverage nila. Or a specific channel na purong nega lang. Like, for instance, in the U.S., right? 
like Biden would call out Fox News, right? Because they're obviously pro-Republican and Fox News, anti-Democrat. You can do that, but he doesn't attack mm -hmm. the entire media or doesn't give a command or tell the whole media to get it together. No, he, he points out Fox News is biased against me as a Democratic president. So, mm -hmm. so for me, I'm not saying lahat ng journalists are completely objecting and fair. Let's not be... Let's not be delusional. So if you have a problem with some sections of the media or some network who are not doing their job, then point them out. But don't generalize and say that the entire media or imply that the entire media has been unfair or is not really being true to its obligation. Yun lang naman sa akin. But as I said, nakikita ko naman yung point ni Senate President Zubiri na hindi naman journalism is not only about looking at the glass half empty or in the case of Philippines, three-fourths empty, right? Maybe once in a while we have to look at the one-fourth full. Right? Hindi naman, I mean, there's some good things happening, no? And, and, and ako, as a columnist, you know, as, as an academic, I try to point out also the good things that have been happening under any administration, including President Marcos, as I pointed out earlier. But I'm point ko nga, at the end of the day, more important than image is the lives of people. More important than image is press freedom. More, than, more important than image is competence. Because once we get the competence right, the image will follow. Professor, kung wala nang influence mainstream media, bakit ganyan ang reaction? No, no, we do have influence in the mainstream media and also bakit, academic. Bakit masama ang loob nila, Nana? Yeah. Uh, well, kasi, eh, Amy, no? Hindi naman nakikinig ang UN sa mga bloggers dito, eh. Exactly. <laughs> Hindi naman nakikinig ang mga investors sa mga influencers, right? They, they laugh at these people. They listen to you. They listen to newspapers or media outlets you and I work in, right? Because the authority is still with us because we do our job. We do diligent work. So, of course, my power pa rin tayo. May, may, we may not have as much power on the voters' imagination like before, but the power of mainstream media in the Philippines, especially legit mainstream media, you know, a lot of us here in the room, is because we are listened to. You know, when the UN makes a report, when, I don't know, Transparency International makes a report, Human Rights Watch makes a report, when uh, McKenzie, for instance, makes a report about investment conditions, hindi sila magsicheck ng mga pro-BBM bloggers or pro-DDS bloggers, right? They're you got to check what top newspapers and media outlets in the Philippines say, what experts say, right? That's where we still have power. That's where we still have power. And that's why the politics is there. Iba, hindi lang naman Philippine media. You read the coverage of the of the foreign media. Dito sa nangyayari sa atin. Gulat na gulat sila that you have prisoners carrying out contract killings of journalists. Right. Unlike, unless the panel did the job. No, unless oh. napanood nila yung movie na on the job. <laughs> yes. I mean, like, scary, di ba? Like, oh my God. Hindi padalitan nila mga movie producer or one journalist. Reality art. Right? Reality imitating art. Like, oh my God, right? Like, it's fun out here. Oh, so, yung mga nanood ng on the job mga Filipino movie na gano'n, yung mga, alam mo yung mga gano'n, they're totally unsurprised. I mean, this is great. I mean, it's, it's insane. But it's yes. it's real. Life mm -hmm. imitates art. It you know, is. Saturn, yeah. Yes. Yes. Pero sa tingin mo, nagre-rebranding na under the new administration. You are feeling a rebranding at, at least in the Human Rights Department for the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. Actually, if you look at the report na lumabas dun sa about Philippines as being the seventh most unsafe, dun sa baba, quotation from the organization behind the rank ranking, this is a, a committee to protect journalists, no CPJ. Yeah. They said they welcome the opportunity or they welcome uh, efforts by the Marcos administration to, yes. to move in the right direction. Like, you wouldn't have imagined three years ago if someone said, we hope under Marcos things improve. But that's the reality now because things were so problematic in certain aspects. I mean, President Duterte got certain things right. I want to be fair to him. But really on the rule of law part, really on the drug war issue, really on the human rights issues, we have been really in deep waters. So ironically, International community, including human rights groups, are looking to Marcos to improve things. And I think President Marcos feels that. Why would he put two top cabinet members in charge of uh, the assassination of Capersi? Yes, Capersi is extremely important, and God bless his soul. It's true. You also see that the president is feeling the pressure. He's feeling the heat because he just went to the U.S., right, and said, 
we, I want to reintroduce the Philippines. And then pagbalik niya, next thing you know, eto na naman, di ba? So I think the pressure is on the president to also show that the Philippines is moving in the right direction. The problem kasi, doon sa mga ibang politiko dyan, for whatever reason, which we all obviously know what these reasons are, um, they don't want to criticize the previous administration, eh, di ba? I, I mean, if you're pro-Marcos, the best way to defend Marcos is to say, hindi kasalanan ni Marcos yan, kasalanan ng dating admin yan. Kaya please give us a chance. But I'm not hearing that, eh. The, the, the argument is, Kasalanan yan, bakit kayo, ano, KJ, puro kayo nega, di ba? Like, I'm not sure that will help President Marcos rebranding. Because guess what? You know what doesn't help the image of the Philippines? When officials are seeing as gaslighting the media. That doesn't help the image of the Philippines. Mm. The image of the Philippines improve if officials are supportive of the media, if the officials, unless you're in China, obviously, as that's Senator Superior said, unless, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? If you want to improve the image of the Philippines, don't lecture the media on their job, right? Protect the media against violence, right? Uh, so, you know, point ko eh, important yan sa image because people are watching what the top officials are saying. Wala kasing presidential spokesman si Marcos ngayon. So, unless you're watching his blogs, I don't know what he's saying. But people are watching what the Senate president is saying, what the, uh, the Speaker of the House is saying, the DFA secretary is saying. So, each of our top officials, especially, their statements matter. And what we need to hear from them is that we are, you know, lifting a new page. No? We're moving towards a new chapter in the Philippines. We had some problems in the past, but we're moving in the right direction. But in ngayon, napansin ko, ayon nila criticizing previous administration, and you can guess why, di ba? Uh, but for me, if I were a spokesman of Marcus, that's what I would say. Like, yes, the situation is problematic, inflation, human rights, but hindi mo kasalanan ni Marcus Jr. yan eh, kasalanan ni ganito yan. But they cannot do that eh, kasi continuity administration to eh. So, yan ang downside ng ganitong situation na meron sila ngayon. Sir, kambi lang ako. Mm -hmm. How would you assess uh, the relationship of uh, the Marcos administration now with the media? I mean, we, we in the last six years, uh, you know, we've had a very colorful uh, relationship with the with the President Duterte. Uh, I, I suppose that's a, a bit of a, a, yeah. an understatement, but, uh, understatement. <laughs> but you know, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Uh, how would you assess it now? Yeah, I mean, Ed, ako. Let me go Chinese again. I mean, as president, as as premier, uh, what's his name? As paramount leader, Deng Xiaoping once said, "No, uh, sometimes you have to cross the river and feel the stone." Right? So, mm -hmm. medyo ganon. I think, yeah, medyo we're in that phase. Na parang both Marcos Jr. and Philippine media are like feeling each other. Like, is this going to be significantly different? Is this going to be better, etc. Mm -hmm. So far, at least, naman kay President Marcos Jr. hindi siya nagmumura nanta. Again, I know the bar is low, but. I will take an improvement any day. Believe me. So I, 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 I hate the fact that I may look like I'm like a, an apologist for the admin. I'm not. I absolutely am not. But my point is, I will take improvement every year. And guess what, Ed? Uh, uh, abroad, Marcos was seen as a breath of fresh air, which is the, you know, which is yeah, so yes, we can imagine like why. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to American investors to buy that. It's like, wow, thank. you. Thank you to Marcos. <laughs> it's like now we turn a new page in our relations. Like that was that was surreal, right? But that's what you get when you have a, a pre, when when you had the Duterte for six years, President Duterte. Okay, okay. So on, on that note, uh, you know, what is your forecast for the yeah. coming ASEAN summit? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's not like President Marcos Jr. is new to this, right? I mean, his first visit was to Indonesia and Singapore. So I think he already laid down the foundation for that. Let's remember, mahalaga ito mga upcoming summits na yan because back to back to yan. There's APEC, there's ASEAN, and then there's G20 in Bali. And Putin might come to at least the G20. Xi Jinping might come at least to the G20. And then Premier Li Keqiang might go to other. And Biden and Kamala Harris are also coming. So all But will the we even be a player there? I mean, you know, how, how big a player... Aren't we a minor player there, or will President Marcos kind of like at least make our presence felt in such a global, uh, right. you know, conference? Ako naman, I, for me, if you know how to play the PR game and the diplomatic game well, you can, uh, even with weak cards, you can overshoot. No, you, you can overperform. Now, so, 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 so think, well, even though we may not be a major power here, we are a major player in ASEAN. We were one of the founders of ASEAN. In fact, ASEAN was founded under Marcos Sr., right? In the late 1960s, no? So, ako naman, I think if Marcos positions himself as one of the co-leaders of ASEAN, along with Singapore, Indonesia, what you 
was exactly trying to do the other month, right? Then I think he can position himself as a mediator. Let's not forget uh, uh, Lucci, no? Duterte presented himself as a mediator between North Korea and Trump. Yes. Remember, there was a time, yung, yung foreign secretary... Pero hindi uh, siya pinansin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but the foreign minister of North Korea in a UN speech in 2017, I remember that very well. He asked Duterte to talk to Xi and Trump, right? So that there'll be nucle no nuclear holocaust. I think he used the term even like that, no? So remember, this is the time when Trump was still feeling it and try to, trying to meet Kim Jong-un and bullying him, etc. So I don't know. For me, baka naman we're underestimating the Philippines. I think if we play our cards well, we can be one of the key players within ASEAN and accordingly project influence and power and be a middle power. We're not a major, but we can be a middle power and intermediary. And Lucci, President Marcos Jr. has a very good relationship with Biden and a very good relationship with Xi Jinping and not a bad relationship with Putin. So I think he is an, in an ideal position to at least posture, right? To at least kind of put on performance of a being a middleman, if not actually being that. So ako naman, I think we are in a good position to be one of the middlemen. I think we're more or less where Singapore and Indonesia have been as far as their balancing relations with the major powers are concerned. Because under Duterte, he was good with Trump, but not good with Obama, not good with Biden, right? Here, balancing relationship not in some major powers. And with Ukraine, and ito pa, we voted in favor of Ukraine multiple times in the United mm -hmm. Nations. Mm -hmm. So Ukraine is also in good terms with us. At the same time, Russia still wants to be good with us because they have a helicopter deal, not $300 million, right? So... Eh, kaso eh, ayaw nila ng mag-refund eh. Kaso down payment na tayo, ayaw nila ibalik. Ayaw na nga eh, baka mag-refund, di ba? Baka pwedeng pasalo na lang daw. So, ilang Russia eh. So, yun ang point ko eh, na parang huwag nyo naman i-underestimate ang Pilipinas. I mean, if I were the foreign secretary, I would have given so many ideas to Marcos to, to play. But I, I trust Secretary Manalo to his, to his job. He's, he's a great diplomat. So, ako naman, I think we can, we can play an important role. And, and, and down the road, I want the Philippines to be part of G20, G20+. Plus, no? Kasi the yes. G20 is not only the 20 biggest, but there are always invited countries na hindi 20 biggest. I think the Philippines can definitely be one of them. Kasi Singapore has been there. Eh. So I think kaya ng Pilipinas in that direction. So ako, I'm excited. I want to see. And, and, you know, remember, President Marcos Sr. was one of the uh, elder statesmen of ASEAN, along with mm -hmm. Lee Kuan Yew and, and, and Suharto, no? And mm -hmm. later, Mahathir. So yun ang kulang ngayon sa ASEAN, eh, walang mga elder statesmen, eh, no? Wala na si Mahathir. Mm -hmm. I don't know kung manalo siya ulit this time. Let's see. Uh, Jokowi, mm -hmm. hindi siya marunong mag-English that much, di ba? And Singapore is Singapore. I mean, they're a city, right? I mean, so, mm -hmm. so Philippines has to step up. And I think President Marcos can do that. I, I think he did very well. You know, on foreign policy, I'll give a very high score to President Marcos Jr. Very, very high mm -hmm. score. Especially coming from where we started three, four months ago. So actually, I'm excited to see what the president will do in the coming uh, months and all. And I think trade and investment will be very much central to his approach. Because obviously, he's not the human rights and all that, right? For understandable reason. And he doesn't want war. South China see too much being focused. So I think trade investment will be big. So APEC, G20, etc. Let's see what is he going to get on the on the sidelines. I won't be surprised Putin will self-invite himself. Na parang, I want to still come to the Philippines maybe next year. So don't 